Erev Tov Chavrin, I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. This is February the 28th, 2018, and it is a very troubling news that we have this evening. Uh, yeah, uh, was it yesterday or the day before yesterday? We actually reported about a strike against Syrian forces once again uh, south of Deir Azor there in Syria along the Euphrates River by U.S. coalition forces there. is an unconfirmed report, and we had seen this on private sources as well as uh, Amman News had been reporting this. And so we've been looking to see if there is other evidence that is, would come out that would suggest that this indeed actually happened. And that evidence has been surfacing, but as well with this evidence, a very serious situation that the U.S. Air Force may have actually been helping ISIS militants to gain control of the region where the Syrian army is battling uh, those ISIS militants with the latest airstrike that may or may not have taken out more Syrian uh, military personnel. Let's get right into it right here. This here is on Le Blog, uh, Sam Latouch, uh, dot over blog.com. U.S. continues a shelling of Syrian government forces. They brought their article out on the 27th. The article does go into the things that we were sharing with you. Uh, it says here, according to sources, fighter planes shelled army positions at the northern entrance of Deir Zor town near Al uh, Saliye settlement, adding that the Syrian air defense units opened fire on U.S. fighter jets. Officials in Damascus and Washington have not yet commented on the incident. Other sources who preferred uh, to remain anonymous said that pro-government forces have captured 22 areas in an attempt to recover energy resources in rebel-held areas in De Azor province, but have had to retreat after the strong U.S. airstrikes. A media reported earlier this month that a U.S. Army attack drone had destroyed a Syrian army tank east of Deir Zord, becoming the second raid in a week's time. The U.S. Air Force uh, on the Syrian army, uh, or excuse me, launched an attack on the Syrian army. Reuters Arabic language website quotes a U.S. official who reports that uh, a U.S.-based MQ-9 drone destroyed a Russian T-72 tank from the Syrian army in Deir Zord. Now, it's going to get a little bit more serious, friends. Uh, we were able to, uh, from Ali Saeed, he shared this particular video footage that allegedly shows the, uh, the missile air defense system going off to intercept or try to intercept U.S. planes uh, overhead that were dropping the bombs. Uh, now, we did find one uh, video out there that was showing the area being bombed. It was in the daytime, so we knew that this was not accurate. Uh, from what we're seeing, because we know that this uh, alleged incident did happen at nighttime. All right, but I want to continue on as well. The Syria, Syrian Observatory for Human Rights, their uh, paper coming out on the 28th as well today, they also, speaking about an international coalition warplanes, commit a new massacre in East Azor and kill 22 people, mostly women and children. They're not acknowledging the deaths of the Syrian Arab military in this particular article here, but they do mention the deaths of civilians as a result of that. Uh, and then I come across this particular footage showing, and I'd also found photographs of this already. This is alleging uh, in this particular region here, where it says footage showing the aftermath of U.S. airstrikes that killed, now they say 30, mostly women and children, northeast of Al Shaaf village of Deir Zor, Syria. All right, now the different ones spell that name differently, the Shaaf, some say Shaaya, uh, depending on who actually does it. I want you to be able to see this though. I'm going to blow this up on the screen. These are the craters here. Uh, and there's actually, I think there's three of them. And the footage that I was seeing, there was three different craters there. Uh, oh, yeah, they are showing more of them. You can see them all down through the, to, through, through the road here. Massive craters in the street. When I, you know, when I first began to see these craters, because, you know, I couldn't imagine what type of uh, ordnance would be doing this type of massive craters. But I'm sure those of you that have been in the military that actually have seen in action, you know what type of craters could actually, what type of bombs could actually make this type of craters. But when I first saw it, I thought, okay, what type of 
you know, ordnance would we be using for the U.S. military that would leave this type of craters in there, you know? So I did a little research, and of course I came across the uh, JDAM, the bomb here, which also can be a guided bomb that can be used by the United States Air Force, and sure enough, it leaves, it makes a blast, kind of like this one right here, unbelievable, look at that, I mean, this is a building and concrete flying up into the air, it looks like, who knows, maybe about 60 feet up into the air, at least, huge concrete structure flying up into the air, and of course, uh, let me back up just for a second here, give you a better idea, uh, this is U.S. military personnel sitting here in the dead chair with his M16, and this is just showing you how big of a, of a uh, crater that rascal can make, and sure enough, that's the type of craters we're seeing there inside of Syria. So it is consistent uh, with what we're seeing there, so I can see that, you know, the video that they're showing there may very well uh, be exactly what they're showing on there may be very well exactly those very craters there. And again, so I'll show you these craters here and just the massive size they are. But here comes the troubling issue, guys. The troubling issue is not so much that America used the JDAMs in there, but what is going on in the aftermath of these bombs being dropped here? Now, this is on uh, the Live View map that we can see. It says here, this was a day ago, ISIS reports that it has destroyed two Syrian Arab tanks in the al Sawaya area in the southeast al uh, Bukamai in the government of Deir Ezzor. Now again, that name right there, Sawaya, is the same name as the other one that I just showed you in that particular video here. They just spell it a little differently, um, where he actually says it, Sha'af Afa village there. The, all these areas here, I've looked them up on the map, they're pretty much all in the same location. This is down by the border, and you have to keep in mind, uh, way over in this area here is Al Tanf. This is where the U.S. has a major military base there. This is where we reported, I don't know, a little over a year ago, uh, the U.S., Norwegians, etc., were all coming across there in this region here. This Free Syrian Army uh, has has moved in in all these directions here. And of course, the rich oil reserved areas there, this is where the battle is at. And the US with the Kurdish fighters have come down into here, but they're not allowing US for, or they're not allowing Syrian forces to get anywhere near these oil reserves there. They're keeping them for themselves. They've been bombing down in this region right here uh, near Al Qaim. And of course, we have Deir up here. Uh, and this is all this area right in here is where this fighting is going on and ISIS militants are getting the upper hand on the Syrian forces and I've got several places about this. The Kwasian News is reporting ISIS new offensive targets of Syrian regime positions Eastern Deir Ezzor uh, update Wednesday on the tw uh, February 28, 2018. All right now this is troubling. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Back up just a minute. Eastern side of their Azord. All right, let's let's just back up just for a minute back to the live view map. Here's their Azord. The eastern side of their Azord is right there in the Kurdish US held area. So what is ISIS forces launching attacks against Syrian forces there? Is the US not taking out ISIS? And then we have on the live view map, ISIS forces also destroying two Syrian tanks, which uh, was happening further down here. And again, you have a uh, U.S. controlled area. Now there's just a little tiny patch in there that yes, maybe there are ISIS embedded there, but the problem is there's not supposed to be any ISIS militants up here around east of Deir Azor. That's in the U.S. controlled or Syrian controlled areas. So how are we getting ISIS militants being able to launch attacks in fact, uh, such a large-scale attack, this here is, it gives you this, that they target Syrian regime positions, but then we come over to here and we find out that they claim they have killed 13, Islamic State claims uh, killing 13 Syrian Defense Force fighters and capturing four in Deir Azor. <laughs> That's a little bit troubling. How are they capturing them there if the U.S. controls that area? And then if the U.S. is bombing the Syrian forces, as it has been uh, alleged in several news outlets already that we've already been sharing with you, 
what's going on? I mean, this is really troubling, friends. It's troubling for me. You know, I know that President Trump said that Obama created ISIS. Obama did. So they got to be loyal to someone. If Obama created ISIS, then who is ISIS answering to now? It's definitely not to President Trump if, he said, if he's the one that is against it. And supposedly we're there to take ISIS out. If Obama created them, who are they loyal to then? Is it the deep state? I don't know. I'm very concerned about the situation there. U.S. General of Ru uh, says here, Russia threatens our ability to dominate airspace in the Middle East. Sputnik, Sputnik News is reporting that right there. In a statement on the U.S. House Armed Service Committee, General Joseph Votel elaborated on the key military challenges to the U.S. in the Middle East. And because of Russia's presence there and their S-300, S-400 uh, uh, defense missile systems in the region there, they don't have the ability to conduct the war against Iran the way they would like to. It's really turning into a mess. And I cannot help but see that it won't be long before something is going to break. And I'm afraid it's not going to be good. Neither for, uh, you know, the Russians, the Syrians, nor our American servicemen that are, that are trying to uh, fight over there as well. Uh, and all the others that are involved in these battles here is going to end up very bloody in the very near future. That's what concerns me. Uh, Putin says shelling from East Ghouta, uh, which hit Russian embassy in Syria, won't be tolerated forever. So now the Russian embassy has been hit by the continued shelling of those militants in East Ghouta. And speaking of that, let me just quickly, I want to show you something. Uh, they talk about the civilian casualties there in East Ghouta. And I want to show something to you that the news will not show to you. So we'll bring this up real quick uh, if I can show that. Uh, they are, in East Ghouta, the militants have imprisoned uh, the women over there. And I have watched where they're driving them through the streets. I want to just see if I can pull any of this up real quick for you so you can see this. Um, they're, they're really trying to keep all this kind of down, but the, the actual information that I, I saw myself, uh, was very troubling indeed and showing these, uh, women and men both in cages, imprisoning them taking them around East Gouda, leaving them in harm's way to become victims to the bombing of the Syrian government and, and the, uh, the Russian, gover Russian government there inside of East Gouda, uh, only to help uh, bring more attention to, uh, here we go, right here, um, eurasiafuture.com. Well, they don't, they don't show the picture when you actually click on the article. I forgot all about that there. But so let me just blow this up for you so you can see this a little bit better here. Uh, there are videos of this as well. And you have to really get it big so you guys can see that on the screen here. So let me kind of, all right. These here, all these here are Islamic women um, or Muslim women that are there in cages. Uh, there were several trucks driving around in East Gouda uh, with these cages in the back full of, the, full of their prisoners there. And also the stories that are coming out that they will not allow civilians to leave East Gouda. They want the death toll to rise. They're, they're putting them like this in cages, leaving them out to be targets for the Russian and Syrian government there so that when they die, then they can rush the white helmets in and make it look like it's worse than what it really is. And this is the type of things that is going on over and over and over in East Gouda while mainstream media makes it look like, uh, you know, that uh, all the evil regime and the Russians, and, and granted, I know there's people that are dying there, and I hate to see that regardless, but uh, uh, to see the, what they're doing, here we go right here, here's a video of it. Another, another, just another one, different, different women all together in this truck here, and then they have in this one here, they're going to have men in this particular one here, uh, if the video will play that for you guys there. And, uh, and, and several of them, it's not just one or two, several vehicles there uh, of these people being held as prisoners and they're being used as guinea pigs uh, for the Russian bombs. 
So very troubling indeed in East Gouda right now that uh, they, are, they are keeping the people in prison and using them as human shields or as targets while they continue to lob attacks against Damascus. Uh, so it looks like to me that we're really about to see a very serious situation happen there. And uh, it's, ju it's just not getting any better. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live, Erev Tov.